Hi everyone. Uh, now I'm going to tell you. I'm going to read you a very lovely story. Uh, the story's name is Lost and Found, and it's written by a little boy uh, whose name is Oliver Jeffers. Now Oliver Jeffers is much like all of you, uh, a child, and uh, he's such a lovely author. Uh, this is a very interesting book, and just like the title suggests, it's something uh, that was probably lost and found. So lost and found by Oliver Jeffers. Once there was a boy, and one day he found a penguin at his door. So he heard a knock at his door. When he opened the door, he found a little penguin standing right at his door. The boy didn't know where the penguin had come from, but it began to follow him everywhere. The penguin had almost become like a shadow of the boy. Wherever the boy went, if he went to the market, if he went to school, everywhere the boy went, the penguin followed the boy. Right behind, two steps behind him, the penguin also walked behind him. The penguin looked sad and the boy thought it must be lost. So the boy thought that the penguin looked very sad. And he thought that maybe the penguin is lost and maybe it's trying to look for its family or its own home. So the boy decided to help the penguin find its way home. He checked in the lost and found office, but no one was missing a penguin. So a lot of cities and a lot of places have something known as a lost and found office. So even your schools have a lost and found box. So if you uh, lose something valuable, like maybe your water bottle or a toy or a very precious story book, you very often find it in the lost and found section. So. The little boy, because he was a little boy, he only knew about that. He thought maybe I go to the lost and found uh, section, I go to the lost and found office, and I'll have the the penguin will find his home. He asked some birds if they knew where the penguin came from. So while he walked back from the lost and found office, and he was walking around the city with the penguin following him right two steps behind him, he asked the birds that he was sitting up on the tree, perhaps some doves. Or some pigeons. He asked them, "Hey, do you all know where the penguin came from?" But the birds ignored him. Some birds are like that, you know. So they just heard him, and they wouldn't care to answer. They just looked in the other direction. So he wasn't very happy about it. The boy asked his little duck, his quacky duck, his squeaky duck. He asked it. Now the boy is asking everybody that he knows, right? But the duck floated away. Even the duck didn't know. So while the boy was having a bath and he was nicely cozily sitting in his bathtub, he asked his little duck. The duck also didn't know. That night, the boy couldn't sleep for disappointment. He wanted to help the penguin, but he didn't know how. He lost his sleep because he was very disappointed. He really wanted to help the penguin, but he didn't know how he could help the penguin because he thought the penguin was lost. The next morning, he discovered that penguins come from the South Pole. But how could he get there? He probably read up books all night, and he saw that hey, you know what? The penguin comes from the South Pole. So now I need to figure out how to get to the South Pole. He ran down to the harbor, and he saw this huge ship, and asked a big ship to take them to the South Pole. But his voice was much too small to be heard over the ship's song. The boy was so little. Can you see a little lighthouse over here? And right next to the little lighthouse is the little boy and the little a penguin. So he tried to scream, but the ship's horn was so loud. The boy's little voice was getting lost in the ship's horn. So together, he and the penguin would row to the South Pole. Okay, so they thought of a fantastic idea. The boy thought that why don't I take the penguin back to his home in the South Pole? So he took out his rowboat out of his cupboard and they tested it for size and strength. They tested: is it okay? Is it strong enough to take the two of us? Now the penguin followed everything that the boy did. So the boy checked the size. The penguin did the same. And the boy uh, tested how strong the rowboat was. The penguin did exactly. They packed everything they would need. They packed an umbrella. They packed some clothes to keep them warm. They packed lots and lots of food, uh, maybe some storybooks as well. And together they pushed the rowboat out to sea. 
Together they walked slowly inched towards the sea and they pushed the rowboat into the sea so the sea and the waves would carry them towards the subway. They rowed south for many days. So it was not just an overnight trip. It was for days together the boy and the penguin and the tiny little rowboat rowed and rowed and rowed. And nights with the boy telling stories all the way. A boy was a storyteller. So he, and the penguin was a very keen listener. He liked to listen to stories. The boy kept on telling stories all through the night and all through the day. And the penguin just kept listening to it. The penguin listened to everything that the boy said. They floated through good weather and bad. So when the weather was nice and pleasant, just like it was here, it was very calm and still. The waves were very well behaved. They were so gentle. And even when the waves were vicious, they were violent, they were wild. There was lightning, there was thunder, there was a storm. Even through that, they rode. When the waves were as big as mountains, until they came to the South Pole. The boy was very happy, he was delighted because remember, he thought that the penguin was looking for a home and now he'd got the penguin all the way from his home. He'd rode the boat and come all the way until the South Pole and here he was very happy that he could get the penguin to his home. The boy was delighted but the penguin said nothing. Suddenly it looked sad again as the boy helped it out of the boat. So the boy uh, was sitting in the boat and he helped the penguin out to get off onto uh, the shore. And he realized that the penguin, all of a sudden, you know, all this while through this amazing, spectacular, long journey, the penguin was perfectly fine. He didn't look sad or angry or upset. But all of a sudden, when the boy was helping the penguin out, he realized that the penguin looked sad all over again. He looked very upset. The boy wondered why. But he said goodbye. He said, goodbye, dear penguin and floated away. But as he looked back, the penguin looked sadder than ever. So the boy gave the penguin the umbrella and uh, he floated away. When he looked back to wave out to the penguin and say bye-bye to him from as he you know, went away and away and further and further into the water, he realized that the penguin looked incredibly sad, much sadder than he'd ever been. It felt really strange to be on his own for this little boy. He felt very sad. He felt very strange that he was all alone in his rowboat. And the more he thought, the more he realized he was making a big mistake. I wonder what the mistake was. The penguin wasn't lost. He realized the penguin wasn't lost. The penguin was just lonely. The penguin was looking for a friend. In fact, boy realized then that the penguin had come all the way from his south pole to the boy's home and knocked on his door only to become friends, to have a friend whom he could talk to, play with, listen stories from. Quickly, he turned the boat around and headed back to the south pole as fast as he could. So he rode the boat fast, 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 faster and he reached the south pole. At last, he reached the pole again. But where was the penguin? He looked around. He got off the shore. He looked around. He saw that the penguin wasn't there at all. The boy searched and searched, but he was nowhere to be found. So the boy looked everywhere with his binoculars. He scored the seas. He looked all over, but he couldn't spot the penguin. So he got back into his boat and he was feeling extremely sad and dejected. There was no point telling stories because there was no one to listen except the wind and the waves. The boy sadly set off for home. But then, so as he was going further into the water and way away from South Pole, the boy saw something in the water right ahead of him. So right ahead of him, he saw something in the water. He couldn't tell what it was. As he came closer and closer, he could see what it was. It was the penguin. Look how the penguin is rowing himself. The penguin is very smart, very clever, very intelligent. He used the umbrella, 
made upside down and use it like a boat and was rowing it and coming towards the boy. The penguin looked extremely happy to see the boy. As soon as they got off and looked at each other, they hugged each other, gave a warm, tight hug. Clearly, the penguin was also missing the boy as much as the boy was missing the penguin. And so, the boy and his friend went home together, talking of wonderful things all the way. So really, this is a story about the boy and the penguin. The penguin who seems to be lost but is found by the boy and the boy who wonders and thinks that maybe he should turn the penguin back to his home and then realizes, no, the penguin wanted his company. He was lonely and that's why he came looking for a friend in this boy. And that's when they both became the best of friends ever. Do you also have a friend whom you love very, very dearly? Do share this story with them. Bye.